Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. I'm Serge. Joining me today, I have a Wheeler. Thank you for having me, Serge. It's great to be here. And a Nelly. I'm also happy to be here. Thanks, Serge. You're welcome. Reminder, the North 100 is brought to you by you with your support over the Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Welcome to part two of our Brothers War set review. Previously, we covered white, blue, and black. And based on the YouTube comments, we're perfect. So we're going to jump right into part two where we're covering red, green, and gold cards. Now, a reminder, if you haven't seen one of these before, these are not exhaustive set reviews. We don't cover every single card, only the ones that we think are relevant to the format or interesting to talk about. And a reminder that we also are talking about some select cards from the commander decks that we think might make a splash in the format as well, because those cards are actually kind of secretly OP from now and, you know, every now and then. I mean, it's where true name came from. <laughs> Scoos. Yeah. Oh yep. my God, scavenging news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Wheeler, start us off. What do you got? I've got Brotherhood's End. Uh, one red red for a sorcery. You choose one. Brotherhood's End deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker and destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less. This is the best one of these that we've ever received. Yeah, yeah. By quite a bit. <laughs> um, it's always live, except for like the maybe like a, a hardcore control mirror, but then flame slash is also dead sort of thing. Um, Jesus. Yeah, it uh, the fact that it hits planeswalkers as well um, just gives this card this added dimension of like being really powerful against creature combo decks that also gets some value out of you know playing it like a grist or an oak well it doesn't kill oko nothing does but you know <laughs> can help chip away at those gets rid of you know liliana the last hope sort of thing uh does a decent amount of damage to the board and then also just nice academy deck idiot mm. why not blow up all your mana rocks now quick question who's actually playing these these days because i typically played them in stacks decks which play a lot of mana rocks to sort of accelerate it out blue moon blue moon oh, yeah. and to a, a lesser extent just sky decks that aren't splashing for green can occasionally mm -hmm. play uh one of these but sweltering suns is the big one like usually they'll play you know you might play a fiery confluence um but that also is just like a giant lava axe um <laughs> but they'll usually play like two maybe even three depending on what the metagame is like and that's not in count and not including like fury or like a glory sure, sure, or sure. whatever um but it's so this is the best one sweltering suns is one of the ones my point that i like to make with this card is that sweltering suns is one of the ones where it's one red red three damage to each creature cycling for three yeah and the idea is like it, oh it's yeah. a free inclusion i can cycle it but no triome cycling for three is okay a spell like that that's three mana to draw a card it's completely outclassed this well now my timing's off because i'm pointing at the sweltering <laughs> suns but brotherhood brotherhood's end is just always live it's flexible um and it's just like three, it's weird. Three is a better number than four <laughs> for the blue moon deck. No, I think I think you nailed it. We could probably move on at that point. Oh no, I'm not done. Okay. Because there's thing in the ice, smoldering egg. Like I can't this is the best card in the set. Really? Yeah, I think so. Or maybe top three. Huh. Why does but... it have to break everything I try to do? <laughs> I'm either on little creatures or I'm on little artifacts. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, dude. But here's this. <laughs> Wheeler and Nelly's end, more like. Mm. All right, Nelly, what's next? We've got Draconic Destiny, the same mana cost we just saw. One red, red for an enchantment aura, enchant creature. And the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying, haste, and pay a generic. This creature gets plus one, plus oh, until end of turn. Fire breathing, but easy to cast. You don't have to pay red. It's also a dragon into in addition to its other types, and has one more ability. When enchanted creature dies, return Draconic Destiny to its owner's hand. Okay, so... Creature enchantments are usually kind of bad, but we make an exception if they're also busted. And <laughs> you, yeah, I mean, or rancor, which I guess is busted. Right? Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the second ability, the the rancor like ability, yeah. the the one that gets it back in your hand. So you are vulnerable to both, you know, counter spells. It might one form of the counter spell, or if they have the mana to remove your creature as you're casting it, you're going to get um, stymied. But other than that. 
Whenever the creature dies, it comes back to your hand, similar to Rancor. Uh, demonic Destiny, is that what it's called? Demonic- Angelic Destiny and Demonic Embrace. Demonic mm-hmm. Embrace. Demonic Embrace does it kind of the best for you. You have to pay life, but you can just cast it out of your graveyard. So that one's the most flexible in terms of recursion. Um, but this one, it gives haste. Haste is a big deal. And the fire breathing is non-color restrictive. So if you're in any kind of situation where you've got tons of extra generic mana, power stone mana lying around, um, maybe it's in the same deck with channel. I don't actually know where to put this. Yeah, where are you playing this? It? Yeah, that's, I don't, that's the big question. Yeah, I don't like, have a home for this card. You know where the home for this card is? Yeah. It's in the garage of my mansion where I park my uh, Bugatti. Mm. Perfect. AKA, uh, that doesn't exist. This doesn't, why is it, where does this go? I agree with everything that Nelson said in that this is a powerful card in a vacuum, but a vacuum in a metagame that no one's playing. Okay, yeah, so don't don't play this card. Yeah, it's just, there's nowhere. I hope everyone appreciates the like sales pitch I did up to just nothing. I, think I was just walking everyone yeah. along a cliff. I'm like, I'm not actually playing this card, but I'm going to talk it up perfectly. Well, <laughs> it's important to get people to understand that there are, a lot, there are a lot of cards, and they often are the kind of cards that people ask about in the comments that are good, but why are you playing them and where are you playing them? Yeah. And it's just like, if it does, just because it doesn't exist now doesn't mean it won't exist You know, a couple of years down the line. Yeah, right? one more mana and you just get the dragon with fire breathing right. haste, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, hey. Don't get me wrong, though. If you, like, put a Primeval Titan into play and then the next turn give it haste and flying <laughs> mm-hmm. and smack your opponent with all your newly found extra, you know, Cabal Coffers plus we... Urborg mana. Oh, okay. baby. Okay, Pro like, Tour Day 2 competitor, <laughs> no Robin. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, you will win that game, but don't mm. say it was the Draconic Destiny that won you the game. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up. Uh, Dwarven Forge Chanter, two mana, one, three Dwarf Wizard for one and a red, has Ward, pay two life, powerful, and prowess gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. We have a pretty powerful low to the ground spells matter card that's hard to remove. Strike against this card. It doesn't have haste, which is something it wants, but I think this is a pretty straightforward card for red decks that play spells. So maybe Jeskai, maybe red, blue. It's not the most exciting card ever. Um, but I think this is a role player that might see play in in exactly that sort of archetype. Which other is it? Blitz creature has ward pay two life. That's that's I think the big thing, right? It, yeah. Instead of haste, it gets three toughness. Yeah. So if you just cast a free spell, keeps it out of bolt range yeah. very nicely. You can yeah, use a cantrip true. as a counter spell to to protect this after they ward it. You're like, ah, nice nice lightning bolt. Let the <laughs> well, okay ward resolves. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Wheeler. What's next? Ferid Enterprising Salvager, uh, two and a red for a 3-3 three, three human soldier. Whenever a non-token artifact you control is put into the graveyard from play, you create a colorless artifact token named Scrap. Uh, for those wondering, Scrap doesn't do anything. It's ah, just there. Okay. Um, and you pay one and a red to sacrifice an artifact. Choose one. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Ferid. It gains mass until end of turn. Goad target creature, much like Scrap, it does... Nothing. Uh, and discard a card, then draw a card. Now, is this one of the commander cards? This is indeed a commander Makes card. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the, the goad. Goad is better. Um, yeah. yeah. So this one, I've been thinking about it for a bit because, well, when an artifact dies, you make an artifact and that's right up my, right up my alley. Non-token artifact. Yeah. But still. Yeah. And uh, I... It's weird to say, but the best part about this is that it makes an artifact that doesn't do anything. <laughs> like, if the sacrifice line was a bit cleaner, you know, maybe I'm asking for too much. Maybe if the abilities were a bit more relevant for what the artifact decks do, either the de- the degenerate ones or the more board controlling ones, then I'd find a home for this. Um, there's like there's a chance that this card slides into artifact decks that are more restricted in their color. So like just red black. Uh, if you're looking for, you know, something to go ham with your Mayhem Devil or your uh, KCI or whatever, then Fareed might find a home there because it is relatively cheap, Ancient 2 mana. But I think this is a card where it's like, I'm not going to play it in any of the decks I currently play, but if we get a density of, say, just red-black artifact stuff, then maybe, uh, then then not even maybe, then Fareed will... will have a home like if you want to put a blue moon or sorry a blood moon and a, a what's it called scrap scrapyard salvager 
No, that's not the right name. The Goblin three Wilder? Three two? Goblin Wilder. Oh, three, oh. three two. Scrap Trawler. Scrap oh, Trawler. If you yeah, want to put okay. a Blood Moon and a Scrap Trawler in the same deck, maybe you end up giving this guy a call. Yeah, yeah. Person. Yeah. I can't tell. <laughs> Sorry, Farid. I don't know your pronouns. Just <laughs> to look at you. Yeah. All right. Next up, Nelly. Felden Ronum Excavator. One in a red for a 2 2 human artificer, young Felden. Haste. Oh Felden can't block. Felden? Whenever Felden is dealt damage, exile that many cards from the top of your library. Choose one of them. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. So, really interesting line of text here is dealt damage. So, there's a certain amount of. You know, fun combo pinging you could do to turn this uh, this chap into some sort of howling mind for yourself. But just a 2-2 two -two haste. Got that incredible line of text. Can't block. Love that. 2-2 mm -hmm. uh, two -two haste for two. And when he dies, he gets you a card, hopefully. At least one, maybe two, maybe. It doesn't even have to die. Yeah. yeah. It's got a chump block. They it. never yeah. want to chump they, block this, right? right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're in a position where they're going to block with their own 1-1 one -one token or whatever, and then you're potentially getting more than one card mm -hmm. out of this. I think it's great. Um, it's kind of like a new version of Robber of the Rich, where you've got a 2-2 haste body that offers you cards. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, seems fine in red deck wins. Maybe other creature decks. All right. Next up, we've got the Goblin Blast Runner, a one-mana 1-2 one, goblin for a single red pip. Gets plus 2 plus 0 oh, and has menace as long as you sacrificed a permanent this turn. I mean, this seems pretty good for goblins. Gob goblins, the fact that you get a one-two for one is already unfair. Uh, it is. What? A, I mean, I don't know about unfair. Yeah. I mean, for goblins, you're like, oh baby, look, uh, how how many terrible one drops is that deck still playing? Uh, zero. It never. They're it's all never so played good. Bad card. Yeah, yeah. Never play bad cards in goblins. Oh, well, Are, mud button clanger. That's that's the. Bad <laughs> that's a three drop. Oh no, that's the one one. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of the lightning bolt. No, there are actually, a lot the of different right. ways that goblins is already sacking cards. It like that is not a big issue. You could also just be playing fetch lands and cracking in there. The fact that you're giving menace is atrocious. Um, I mean. I guess maybe the only problem with this goblin is if the one drops are so tight, does it have something? No, I did. Yeah, yeah. This is getting in. Uh, yeah, the yeah. goblin list is actually starting to look like only cards that you recognize. It's kind of messed they were up. Good in draft or something, oh, right? Like, I mean, I do kind yeah. of miss the days of looking at a goblin deck and just kind of going cross eyed and being like, "Sorry, which one mana one one with an activated ability that isn't relevant is this?" <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're like, "Is it Skirk Prospector? Prospector? I don't really care. Prospector, part of me." Otherwise, I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and kill them all. I don't know. I'm probably dead. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. Good for goblins. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but it's good to talk about. Next up, Wheeler, Mishra's command. X and a red. It's a sorcery. Choose two. Choose target player. That player may discard up to X cards. Then they draw a card for each card discarded this way. The spell deals X damage to target creature. This spell deals X damage to target planeswalker. And target creature gets plus X plus zero and gains haste until end of turn. I really like this card just because it's something that can kill. Like the fact that it's not the best answer to it, but it can kill Minsk and Boo. Right. <laughs> and like, I'm not, maybe not that card specifically, but just as an example. I'm fine right? if we just like talk about every card as how good is it against Minsk and Boo. Oh, That's Glory fine. Bringer has never been better. <laughs> yeah. Glory Bringer is quite good. That's fair. Um, and the fact that this can just take care of two things with one card is pretty appealing. Um, the fact that you can find this off Micromancer is kind of cute mm. as well if you're like going hard on your Blue Moon deck to find Ancestral Recall. Um, the haste, the plus X plus zero in haste is not dead on this card either just because you're a deck that, you know, if you are, say, playing this in Blue Moon or Big Red, um, you are going to want to, you know, just play the double removal spell, but also potentially close out with what is effectively a fireball. Like it's kind of a sneaky way of saying also X to the face. Um, but my only concern is that it might just be card number 101. You know, it, it's, it can be a bit expensive, but ultimately it'll get the job done. It is just like, card a hundred like you have you truly have to play with it i feel to get a the the real solid read on it mm. um 
but, you take um, out like a dragon and a planeswalker, though, you feel pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah again, yeah. They, there's no there's no downside to this. But I see what Wheeler's saying, which yeah. is, what would you put this in over? How many five mana removal spells can you afford in your deck? Yeah, like it kills an elf and a down tick to fairy which is kind of hot so like even for like a gruel monsters deck but then you have like you have arc trail still so like arc trail is probably underplayed too but yeah. this has more utility I'm it's just, it's tricky to gauge i'm it. trying to think of it as well as what mana costs are you happy casting this at right because like early game it seems other than that one situation we casted for two and you're pinging an elf and a one loyalty mm -hmm. planeswalk or something that's kind of tough everything in between feels kind of awkward yeah, I mean, the answer to that isn't very satisfying, but it's like you are happy paying whatever you need to pay. Uh, yeah. Because it just, that's what, you know, you need to, you play this spell to have the flexibility of getting the job done no matter what the scale the range. is. I try, yeah. I try to think of cards like this, of like, what are the break points where I'm happy? Mm -hmm. um, and you gave a very pragmatic answer, which is to simply do the thing that wins, forehead. <laughs> yeah, <that's, yeah. laughs> I think Blue Moon should, should maybe try it, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's that's the yeah. controlling, more, I mean, no offense, that's the more real deck that should give it a shot. Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> well, Big Red is, um, hey, Nelson, what card are you going to talk about <laughs> next? <laughs> yeah, moving on is fine. Yeah. It's Sardian Adventure. Uh, one in a red for a 1-1 one, one Goblin Warrior goblin warrior with first strike and trample and whenever sardian adventure attacks it gets plus x plus o until in turn where x is the number of artifacts your opponents control nice and whenever an, an artifact an opponent controls is put to a graveyard from the battlefield sardian adventure <laughs> deals one damage to that player what so this is why this is another one of the commander cards oh my God. and why does it hate so hard why does it wow. hate so much <laughs> hey wheeler i hear you've been doing really well with artifact God. decks lately uh, first yeah, strike yeah. and trample That's all right what What's your valuation, Nelly? <laughs> I'm terrified of this card. <laughs> Sorry, like, I mean, it's it's nice that the floor is low. Like, you've got a one one for two that your opponent might not care about if they can kill it right away. That dies to everything. There's no ward or anything like that. So that's nice. But the upside is pretty insane. Like, when you play against a dedicated artifact strategy, some suddenly you're attacking, you know, on turn three for five or whatever, and then on turn, you know. On turn seven, you're attacking for like 19. <laughs> Plus the pinging like shuts down a lot of stuff. Like that is a very mm -hmm. specific targeted, every deck that Wheeler is playing right now loses. So I want to say, what's worse, this or oof? Oh, oof by yeah, a mile. Okay. It's just good to check, um, you know. But, but it's worth mentioning that this like Goblin's only really has trash master as their well they can they can play like goblin crater maker but that that's sure i'm never dying to that what are you nuts <laughs> uh but trash master is like a, a card that can that can actually put a stop to some artifact shenanigans um but trash master is four mana which isn't impossible but the if you are able to like goblin matron into this card or demonic tutor into another uh into the sardian avenger that's much more effective at dealing with the artifact combo decks. And then really quick, if people don't know what Trash Master is, because you said it's an answer for a goblin player, what is it? It's a two uh, two and two red, so four total for a three three goblin warrior that says other goblins you control get plus one plus one and sacrifice a goblin destroy target artifacts. Oof. So yeah, a powerhouse and, and it hits all artifact decks, but the scariest artifact decks are the ones that are putting cards in their graveyard, mm. I think. Cool. All right, next up, me. I've got, and this is the final red card we're going to talk about today, Visions of Phyrexia. This is a four mana enchantment for two red red. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. And at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't play a card from exile this turn, create a tapped power stone. If you know what a power stone is, it is a mana rock, taps to add a colorless. And there's a double negative here. This mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell, so it works on Everything other than that, activated abilities, artifact spells, equip abilities, all all, all kinds of stuff Cumulative like that. Upkeep. Yeah, cumulative mm. upkeep, you know, in case it's relevant in our format. Uh, so this is kind of neat. There have been spells that have seen play like this before. I think they've gradually fallen out of favor. The one I'm thinking of is, it was from the Dragons of Tarkir. Outpost here. Siege. Outpost Siege. Saw a lot of play, four mana, um, get a free card every turn. Um, there was the... Conspiracy artifact that as one well. That was really popular, right? The course uh, portal. portal. Yeah, course yeah. of portal was another one. I don't think many people played any of these cards. It's tough at four mana, not 
I mean, not impacting the board when it comes down makes it really tough to want to play. This does have some upside, and, and I think the only deck I could maybe think of playing this would be like Big Red or Stacks, uh, which is a deck that can get to four mana very quickly, really wants extra cards, and the ability to create a Power Stone token each turn is great for Big Red because it wants lots of mana, and Stacks loves it because it wants to be able to sacrifice stuff. I'm thinking like Black Red Stacks with Braids and this, it's slow, it's kind of an engine card, but I'm, I'm kind of stretching trying to find a home for this. I don't think it's great, I think it's neat, I think people are going to want to talk about it. Um, and historically, the one card that we really missed was an effect similar to this. It was a red enchantment that gets you extra cards. The flavor text had coffee. Experimental Frenzy. Experimental Ooh, Frenzy. Frenzy. For the record, I don't think we missed on that card. Okay. Card's not hasn't been playable in our for, format. For Highlander, yeah, yeah. But we're like, nah, this is kind of stinky. Four mana for a card that gives you the ability to destroy itself. Like, this is a mana cost and an ability that we have seen in red a lot that is powerful in a lot of formats and i'm <laughs> like a like a c minus on <laughs> this version i i just want to give a nod to anyone whose like pet deck is like the is it yokel mm -hmm. because i think that this is maybe the best one for them <laughs> as you can as it gives you an option yep. to maybe get back in if you aren't already going to be ahead on the board after the yokel mm -hmm. sure so and and I should clarify. I know I was uh, talking smack about Big Red, but I want you to understand at home that I have in fact played quite a bit of Big Red stacks in my life. Uh, famously, uh, killing Surge in the finals of a, a Highlander event. Right, your first time making the finals, and I beat you with Big Red. Thanks, bud. Remember that? Yeah. I splashed white for a Johnny event. Yeah, and then uh, I showed up subsequent weeks with my own stack stack, and he beat me with hoof. <laughs> You know, life goes on. Speaking of going on, <laughs> let's move on to green. Okay. Wheeler. Audacity. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect timing. Uh, <laughs> Audacity. A green enchantment. One green. It's an aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two plus zero and has trample. And when Audacity is put to a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. So this is... A fixed rancor yeah basically um i still like it i i think in the decks rancor has fallen off a bit in uh how universal it is in green x aggro but if you're gruel or if you are mono green you're still slapping rancor and i think i'm still slapping this card there are even some builds of blue green i don't want to call it tempo but it's shares a lot of the dna with like Sorensen, where Rancor is just fire in that deck, it turns out. You know, giving your uh, Tarmogoyf Trample or even giving like a Ledger Shredder Trample is uh, often enough to just, you know, kill people dead and having redundancy for these cheap spells uh, that just let you push damage is, is huge. Like when we did Strixhaven, there was a card called Crash Through or something. It's like one mana draw a card, creature gets trample. Everything gets trampled. And the, yeah. yeah. And the, or sorry, not Crash Through. Um, oh. Charge Through. Charge Through is one target. green. Target yeah. creature gets trampled. And that was yeah. like, great, this is huge. We haven't had this effect yet. Right. And I played it a bit and it was like, yeah, this is fine, but I want more power. So here you go. Quick shout out as well to the Sanctum Stompy decks. Probably yes. really happy to see a card like this. It's cheap. It cantrips. Mm -hmm. uh, your growth threats uh, need trample because you have a, the ability to make a large, a lot of very large threats, but not a lot of evasion with them. So like a second Rancor and especially something that replaces itself when it dies because that deck is very card draw hungry. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's uh, yeah, shout out to Audacity there. All right, Nelly, next. Awaken the woods. X green green for a sorcery. Create X one one green forest dryad land creature tokens. They're affected by summoning sickness. We we got a mass token land production spell. I love token lands. Um, I don't have a home for this, or think it's a tier one spell, or think that it's gonna like definitely break the game open. I just really really like the card, so we included it on the list. Or maybe one of you two think it's actually good. I. I, I like the flavor <laughs> and I like the feeling of this card so much. I'm so hype on this card for like how it lets you play the game that I I usually when I'm that happy to see an effect, like a new kind of way to play magic, I can't even turn on the part of my brain that like allows me to critically understand whether it's gonna be good. And so sometimes I like really miss by saying like, okay, this card's probably not good because I like it. And then it turns out that Phyrexian Metamorph is actually like a really solid card, that sort mm. of thing. Uh so Awake in the Woods, it's probably real bad, but I'm gonna cast it. Sweet. 
Next up, <laughs> Blanchwood Prowler. This is a two mana, one, one elemental for one and a green. When it enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a land card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, it gets a plus one, plus one counter on it. I mostly just like this card because it's an elemental. Yeah, it's an elemental. And they're... We often talk about emerging tribes, like decks that are trying to do interesting things. And I recently, on a Friday Night Paper Fight, had a very mixed evening trying to pilot elementals. The secret to the elemental deck is the elemental invocations, fury, solitude, etc., which are obviously very, very good. The downside to the elemental deck is very few cards care that you are playing other elementals. So shout out to this card for being a two-mana elemental. There's not a lot at that point. And hopefully... We get to see more elementals, specifically cards that synergize with each other. It, it's good in that deck, too, because it gets you a land in the hand to play when you have Omnath on the field, right? It, it is very funny that I don't recall whether or not you had, like, a lands package in that deck. Oh, I did, yeah. You did, okay, yeah, he good. he did draw it against you, but he did draw it against yeah, me. Yeah, I, okay. I played... Like, both games, you just, like, we, landlocked we played yeah. a lot of games afterwards, and I still don't think I saw it no, that Nothing, you saw nothing. It. I went 0-9 and nine against Wheeler <laughs> that night, and I went 2-1 and one against Nelson, winning with the lands cards. <laughs> Okay. Elementals did nothing. Yeah, I was yeah, all night. Fastball it was so wild because yeah. I'm like, this is the one deck that would like love the lands pack. Oh, I had it. Yeah, I went. It. I, I went Titanium to Zern Orb oh, right, like sorry, both games back yeah. oh, and just like right. just oh, yeah. just crushed. Oh, it was it was, it was night and yeah, day. Yeah, molded me. That's right. But it was yeah. it was it had nothing to do with the elementals. It just had to do with like other cards that were already strong, which was really disappointing. I, I didn't get to see an Omnath at all. But yeah, mm -hmm. let's please print more <laughs> Watsy, more elementals, please. Wheeler, move, let's move on. Bushwhack. <laughs> one green for a sorcery. Choose one. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Or target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. First off, as the premier lay the land player in the format, <laughs> uh, this is going right into Goblin Char Belcher. Secondly, I think this card's just really good for mono green stompy. Like, if we're, if I'm talking some real sicko build with like 25 lands, <laughs> yeah, like real ham, go. because that deck just wants prey upon already, yeah. but doesn't want to play prey upon because that's <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. So, and that that's a real flaw with Canlander players. We'll look at cards like, there's no way I'm playing this. Uh, but you should. Um, and this one's a great example because you can keep a land light hand with this if you need to hit your uh, land drops, but also just having a bonus like, oh, okay, my um, three mana five four is going to fight your three mana three three, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I can also see this being good in like anything big Simic. Like mm. if you're just, you just have a lot of lands in your deck. And so then you have a draw that's like, oh, sometimes it's a land and sometimes it's a removal spell. Simic. I could play this in Sorensen actually. I don't think that's bad because Sorensen is a deck that also just like wants to play back to basics as well. Yeah, um, and it wants to like play spells for no reason because has grow creatures. Yeah, too. you yeah, like exactly. it wants Ledger well, Shredder fodder with right? the grow creatures. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Right, and, like put a plus one plus one counter and then mm -hmm. fight my creatures bigger. Haha. -ha. Yeah. And it's a low land count deck as well, and your creatures are pretty big. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. or just make a land drop, but also I cast a spell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. Next up. Is it me? Sorry. Gaia's Gift. One and a green for an instant. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains reach, trample, hexproof, and indestructible until end of turn. That's a lot. So at first glance, this is like clearly the draft blowout you want to watch out for. Um, and it's got so many words on it that maybe it gets into the Gruel Stompy decks. Or possibly... I even like it, I like it in Infect. I Infect, like, yeah. This answers everything right it, yeah indestructible and hexproof i also think trample. canadian highlander players notoriously undervalue combat tricks sure and I, w yeah no not the berserk players <laughs> i mean yeah yeah not the berserk players yeah but, yeah like do you remember how bad it was feeling when you get hit by like um oh what was that old one mana green your creature is like Might of old crows yes wait no might of old crows so you're thinking this the scale pump up 
Let me let me okay, finish describing finish. it. It has it has two modes. You pay one green and your creature is like hexproof, and you pay a second green, it gets like plus four. Plus Vines four. of Vastwood. Vines of Vastwood, right? Like this reminds me of that. It's just like a card that on the one hand is defensive, but on the other hand is a pump spell. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this gives your creature trample is the way to push through that damage as well. It's not the flat damage of Vines of Vastwood, like Infect would use to kill the person, but I think it does offer that like, oh, suddenly my big creature can get through and it's a defensive spell and it's pretty cheap. I don't know. I, I'm high on this card. I, I think you're onto something, but I, I really want to reinforce part of what you touched on where I think you need to be, you need to treat this as a I'm killing you card mm. and not as not so much like, like blossoming defense can be an I'm killing you card as well, but really it's at its best when you just like blow out someone's removal spell, you know, or you trade up like that. Um, this card, re uh, holding up two mana as your reactive spell is yes. a little yeah. more telegraphed, but making like an all-out attack and then just being like, all right, here you go. I'm surviving this combat, and also this is permanently bigger, and I might, you know, tramp over for one damage or whatever. It's pretty hot. And in um, fact, too, it's a, it's a good start to just be like, okay, we're casting this. Does it resolve? Okay, cool. I'm just gonna unload oh, my yeah, hand right. now. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. that's important. In in fact, yeah. is usually for the two mana ones, you want the big like I'm plus four and trample. Mm -hmm. But the starting spell, the, yeah, first, the first spell, spell you play, so you is the, the most important. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're like, great, scale up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're like, oh no. <laughs> this resolves. Yeah. Okay, let's go. All right. Next up, it's me. Root wire amalgam. This is a fun. All right. So this is a prototype card. So I'm just gonna read it from top to bottom. All right. Root wire amalgam. Five mana artifact creature golem. The prototype cost is one and a green for a two three. Then there's an activated ability. Three green green, sacrifice the amalgam, create an XX colorless golem artifact token where X is three times its current power. It gains haste until end of turn, activate only as a sorcery, and then it's a 5-5. Five, five. So there's two modes. There's a 2-mana two 2-3, two, or there's a 5-mana five, 5-5, five, five, both modes obviously having that activated ability. <laughs> this is good. Just the three times making me <laughs> giggle? It's just, I don't know why. It just hit me, but I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. You make a 15-15? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with yeah. haste. Now, notably, it doesn't have it doesn't have trample, mm -hmm. so like it, it still gets there. And you can only activate it as a sorcery, so you can't like I know you're making a face at me. But, like, you can't do it in response. Yeah. There's yeah. not there's yeah. not like a way to there's not a way to um, protect it with this mode. Like they try and target it with a removal spell, and you get to get around it. Uh, but it's a very good use of your mana to hit for a bunch of damage, right? Like I think. Like green red monsters is probably happy for something like this because it comes down early on the curve. It's a mana dump. Later in the game, it's pretty big. And also, there's an interesting thing of like, uh, it's weird with acceleration. I'm trying to think of a good sequencing of this off a mock start for turn one, and then like an ancient tomb crack it, and then suddenly you're swinging for six on like turn four, or something like that. I don't know. It's it's weird because it has these different breakpoints of if you just cast it on turn five, then you have this five five. If you cast it early, it's got this activated ability where suddenly it like transforms into a pump spell that's kind of bigger. It's got a lot of flexibility at different mana breakpoints. And I don't know. I think the hardest card of this card is going to be figuring out the sequencing of when to play it, when to crack it. If I'm against a red deck, I'm paying this, playing this as a, a two mana two three. Yeah. And I'm hoping to trade with an opponent's creature. If I, if they're not playing red, I'm always slamming this on five. <laughs> that ability, act, like that, just reads like if you don't have it, you're dead. That's cowboy magic right there. That's <laughs> wild. It's close to a dark episode. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's close. yeah, it's yeah. Close. yeah. Fifteen, fifteen. All right. So let's talk about homes. I said green, red monsters. Uh, medium, medium green. green. Yeah, mm -hmm. medium green's pretty clear there. Any other big? All, mana green decks? All these prototypes, any of the prototypes that have a reasonable casting cost that fits into it, I would consider in Bant Blink just to get the cheat out of the, the big version for less Oh, mana. play it for two and then yeah, flick it If you're already whatever. playing Charming Prince, these prototypes all love. Like, what about ephemerate. green, green, white, mid range? It might just have like a fair Resto Angel or something in there. Sure. I have no idea what that deck looks like right now. I haven't faced it at YJ. I'm thinking like an, old, like an old, like an old Blade, right? Yeah, like the old Lands decks. package. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's turned into. Right, exactly. Probably. Yeah. Cool. All right, next up, Wheeler. Teething Wormlet. 
uh, one green for a one one. It's a worm, um, aka my GF. That's a joke for the people listening to this that are under the age of 20. Teething Wormlet has death touch as long as you control three or more artifacts. And whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. If this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn, put a 1-1 counter on Teething Wormlet. Huh. This card's a lot. Yeah. It's an awkward spot of there's a lot going on here, but finding a home might be a bit tricky just because green artifact aggro i mean i'm i've been workshopping this for a while which is old rutstein workshopping right. this right yeah but it, artifact tokens trigger yeah. yeah so like treasure tokens clue tokens food tokens yeah but it's only once per turn for the plus one plus one counter not the life gain oh right if you can set up some sort there's, of there's two different there's two different parts there your right? jatty offshoot is showing exactly. yeah exactly it's another jatty <laughs> offshoot combo. okay all right <laughs> retreat to sacrifice my artifact to trigger my whatever yeah artifact back into play yeah is that too cute um no, I don't want to look. If you're, I don't want to spoil your fun. If you're already Oryx Salvagersing for infinite mana. Just pay one green, and now you have an infinite <laughs> life too. That's way better than killing your opponent. <laughs> All right, that's that's fair. That's fair. I don't know. I kind of don't hate it as just like this random bonus typhoid rats you could put in blue green X Academy decks. It'll I get, don't know what the heck I'm cutting, but it's like it'll get like three power in a game. <laughs> yeah, well, we've never I don't know. I've never been offered a card like this where it's like, hey, you playing a whole bunch of artifacts in your academy deck and you already have like reap and so there and crop rotation like put this in. It trades with a creature or sometimes gains you a bunch of life. I mean, know? locally, we had a player that was kind of going through a, a, a wide selection of battle bots or like artifact ish aggro deck truly. Davy B was ahead of the head of the whole pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Smart guy. First to realize, wait a minute, Urza's broken without Arcbound Worker. Huh. And uh he played a green version of that deck and it killed people. It was pretty good. I think he either won an event with it or got to the finals. I could see it in that list. Because if you play this cheat uh, early on and it just keeps growing, 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 yeah. and you're just looking to make as many card structs and like I don't know. Buys you a lot up. of time too, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't hate it. It's just a little niche, and I do think, you know, even with all the work that David B. did, that ar I feel like that archetype is, like, really underexplored, mm. you know? So, if it's got a home, it's there, but... It's not getting into Team or Goblin Mulder or anything? No. The last one, the Big Idiot, absolutely is, because that deck sure. loves Verdurous Gear Hulk. This <laughs> thing, I don't know. It's, okay. yeah. All right, next up, Nelly. Titania, Nature's Force. Four green green for a legendary creature elemental with you may play forest from your graveyard. Ooh. And whenever a forest enters the battlefield under your control, create a five three green elemental creature token before. So she's still still doing that. And whenever an elemental you control dies, you may mill three <laughs> cards. Whoa, the synergies. Oh. So we got a six six for six in green. That lets you play some lands from your graveyard, just your forest, but still. And then when you play a forest, you get a 5-3, and when your 5-3 dies, you mill three cards. So, you know, if you're playing a bunch of lands and you think you can fit another another 6-drop in, it's not as good as prime time, but it... Elemental. It would only go in elementals. It also is yeah, an elemental. It's an elemental and it cares about elementals. Go with me on this journey. I even said the surge line. Um, <laughs> go with me on this journey here. Mm -hmm. uh, so the elemental deck, a lot of five drops, right? Yes. You got your solitudes, your furies. Yep. Uh, Mull drifter elemental. Yep. Wave sifter elemental. So I've been cooking up this list. It kind of worked for that weirdo elemental landscape shift cycling deck I played. <laughs> Cut the cycling crap. Yeah. Because what I want to do is just play elemental blink. Yep. Because then you yep. you know evoke one of these broken elementals. They have, so they have such good you, ETBs. And yeah. you blink them. Yep. Right. And then you um, get the ETB twice and you get the body. Right. So we're there. One of the parts of that deck with the lands package is also all these fives just neoform into primeval titan really cleanly oh. or into ancient oh. green warden, which is like a, a big six mana elemental that lets you play lands from your graveyard yep. already. Yeah. And so this this is great because that's what that deck needs is more reasons to take these th kind of goofy steps into this powerful play pattern. Um, Do we have pod in that deck? I was, good, I was about to say, I played pod and pod is free now <laughs> yeah. and pod right. is great well, in that deck. One. It's Oh, I thought pod was free. Pod is one. Did One's basically free. Oh. And I died, yeah. before we get past it, 
This is from the Commanders. Yes, right. thank you for calling that out. Commander Titania, yes. All right. But that looks solid. I wouldn't put it in hoof. Yeah. But yeah, any deck that's already jamming Primeval Titan and has room for it, especially that Elmo deck. Next up, me. Now, this is our first meld card. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be talking for a bit here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about both sides of the meld card. So, Titania, the land, and then we're going to talk about, the introduce, rather, the backside. Because I don't think it's possible to have a conversation about any of these meld cards without sort of evaluating them all at the same time. So, first off, Titania, Voice of Gaia, is a 3-mana, three 3-4 three, legendary elemental for one green green. It has reach. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, gain two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and control Titania Voice of Gaia and a land named Argoth Sanctum of Nature, exile them and meld them into Titania. All right, let's talk about Argoth next. Argoth Sanctum of Nature is a land. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary green creature. Tap to add a green. Two... And green green, so four mana tap, create a 2-2 two, two green bear creature token, then mill three cards. Activate only as a sorcery. And the final step, the melded form, <laughs> is Titania Gaia Incarnate. Is a legendary elemental avatar star star with vigilance, reach, trample, and haste. Power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. When Titania enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And then three in a green, put four plus one plus one counters on target land you control. It becomes a zero zero elemental creature token with haste. It's still a land. Wow, I've, talking, I've talked for a long time there. And since I just went through all of that... <clears throat> Wheeler, could you start us off? Because I'm kind of out of breath. Yeah, sure. This is the best <laughs> meld in the set, not close, and also might be the best. It, it's hard to, they're separate cards, but let's put them together. The best thing in the set, which is weird because they're not that like, like Titania herself is, is good. You'd play her in the lands deck. She blocks well. This is the front face Titania. The front face yeah. Titania, the voice of Gaia, yeah. Blocks reasonably well. Um, if you have another way of putting lands in your graveyard that isn't Zurin Orb, this can also combo with Fastball and Crucible. Uh, reach is huge. I mean, Endurance has shown that just a 3-4 reach is like a body that is difficult to get past. We love our 3-1 flyings. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then Argoth, the land, is free. It's a land. It's just a land that in our lands deck we'll be able to find with our cards that find lands. Um, and then even outside of like, oh, no, it comes into play tapped. It's like, okay, have you heard of Treetop Village? Um, <laughs> but it, the, the chances are, you know, it won't because the deck already has a density of legendary green creatures that it plays. Um, so if it comes into play untapped, great, cool. If it comes into play tapped, whatever. This mill ability is huge. If you're just oh drawing God. off the top of your deck, start making two twos, start finding your life in the loam, start getting back, like, you know, maybe mill into a Savine's Reclamation or whatever. Great. Um, and it's not that difficult to melt these two, which is so weird to say. <laughs> because as someone that has, like, lifetime made Hanweir Writhing Township, like, once <laughs> in Highlander, the, the old, um, the red, medium red one. Uh, the other meld pair that includes a land. Yes. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's hard. This is easy. It's shocking. Easier. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Especially in a deck that's as resilient as uh, Abzan lands, uh, four color lands, Jund lands, green, white. Yeah. Wow. All right. I can take over the back. All right. Let's talk about the melded side as well. This is shockingly powerful for how easy it is to put together wow this closes out games i wonder the rate the ratio in which you'll go to put this together over something like dark depths which is kind of weird and comparable because this this slaps hard obviously i i think it'll depend on your 
it's more of a mid-range way to try and close out the game as opposed to like a combo way because sometimes if you're if you're trying to go for like a turn three dark depths your hand is completely garbage it can fall apart and it's quite fragile to disruption and stuff like this you can go kind of like a fair route of playing out titanium on the front half and then like crop rotation out the land and then do some shenanigans and this can be very 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 big can i see the front half of titania really quick the three mana one upkeep okay it's upkeep so upkeep you are you have to expose yourself to your opponent's sorcery removal to get this out i was trying to think of a hermit druid kill with this oh nice mm. okay yeah because you could hermit druid both pieces get returned off savine's reclamation mm, which is right. kind of hot what what are you worried about sorry what are you worried about for the sorcery speed because you with dark depths you do it at their end step no I'm, i just mean you have to, the normal way you're going to play pat like the normal play pattern is like you cast titania on your own turn and then you pass maybe you have the land in play already mm -hmm. and the lands in the graveyard already but then your opponent gets a turn to kill titania it's a creature without oh this without hex proof or anything. i yeah, understand yes yeah. yeah. okay. yeah just the setup for getting the melt the melt half the melt yeah the yeah, melt, melt the cards, half just wins the game yeah obviously <laughs> yeah, yeah, the back, yeah. and the, back can, of the cards is crazy strong yeah and this is like vulnerable to crack as but then again, so is the Dark Depths token. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, no, this is, yeah, it's weird because Wheeler did so much of the commentary there. Uh, this is easily achievable, uh, very free to include, like every single part of this you want to include. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's any reason lands decks shouldn't be playing this. I don't think there, there's a reason like mid-range decks that have any semblance of a land package shouldn't be playing this. Uh, it, I just want to talk about the line, when it enters the battlefield, return all land cards from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. That is an effect that lands players have wanted to have be good for a long time. Like, I've always wanted to cast Splendid Reclamation and have it be good, but oftentimes you just die with it in your hand. Yeah, you cast that and your opponent also has a four mana green sorcery, but it's natural. Order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or exactly. Game shift. Or yeah. Game yeah. Shift. yeah. And like Renin Seven is kind of cute because it also has that mode, and you're often just like, Am I ever going to be able to use this ability for Renin Seven? And you're like, No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, but you're probably already winning that game, right? So yeah, yay, Titania. And that's our our final green card. Mm -hmm. And let's move on to the gold cards. And I'll, I, sorry, Nelly. No, I'm, you're good. I'll, I was going to say, maybe I should I'll, let's, play let's, Titania, Nelson, everybody. Nelson should take this next one because you like this card. Yeah. Okay, all right. Sure. Nelly, or start us off with the gold cards. It's Arbalest Engineers. Yeah, I, I do like this card. <laughs> I like it. One red, green, three mana for a 2 2 human artificer with when this enters the battlefield, choose one. Arbalest Engineers deals one damage to any target or. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It gains trample and haste until end of turn, or create a tapped power stone token. So I just think I don't know. Like I'm always on the lookout for half decent gruel three drops. Um, I I like the green red stompy decks, land of war elves into something good the following turn. Maybe play a sword of fire and ice in there. And this one just has great flexibility. I'm not sure how many decks are going to include this card when they're going for Power Stone tokens, but having the one damage ping if you need to take out their Vendillion click so you don't die versus putting a plus one plus one counter on anything, it doesn't have to be itself, and then giving it Trample until end of turn, I just think it's solid including Green Red Stompy. I thought of a great place to put this. Hermit also Humans. Human. Oh, it's a, yeah, Hermit it's a human. Humans. Yeah. Now, because this is so clean, you don't have to play... Like a blood artist is whatever, but you don't really want to play a blood artist. But this is a human with an ETB that you can loop through like Safi uh, combo with like Renegade Rally or whatever. Right. Um, that pings your opponent's face. Yeah. You just ping, you just kill them. Speaking of a free ETB, does this work with a Lurin? I never really worked through the combo. But it's an ETB that deals damage and you can bounce it over and over. Like any of those creature combo decks where you're infinitely looping something, this is just a, uh, it's it's cheap, it's two power, which means mm -hmm. it's tutorable and possibly learnable, and it kills them. Jundalurin. <laughs> Get your horn kavus ready, folks. <laughs> All right, next up, me, and then we'll go back in the proper order here. Sure. Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard, is a two mana 3 3 <laughs> legendary human soldier for a red and a green. Sacrifice the Loyal Bodyguard. Legendary creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain indestructible until end of turn. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Damn, Watch Wolf, you got hot. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's, that's interesting to note because traditionally the two mana 3 3s have been in green and white. 
And all of a sudden, we have one here in green and red. Uh, Gruel Aggro has been a deck that has been very good for a very long time. So you could play that vanilla in there. Uh, but the Legendary Creatures that Matters is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very fascinating. Is there a... I mean, obviously, it's a human as well. So, like, we can't ignore that in the tribal synergy. Is there a Legendary Creatures matter package yet well if we get like the naya legends or something naya like that? legends yeah. yeah that's the big one if we can get bard class up on the screen if oh, possible yeah. b-a-r-d-c-l-a-s-s -S -S, it's one of the class enchantments i'm not going to read too much into it but i'll read the first two of legendary creatures you control <laughs> enter the battlefield with an additional one one counter on them and the second level is legendary spells you cast cost red and green less to cast so Majar was made for this deck. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, this card is obviously great. Passes the vanilla test uh, and has nothing but upside. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it has a home that I wasn't too aware of, that's a that's, that's a blind spot archetype for me. And I'm glad to know that's getting increasingly sweet. Uh, shall we move on? Yes. Are let's. you tired of getting a little bit blown out by Caracas? Why not get really, really yeah. blown out by Caracas instead? It's got no. It plays by the D and T uh, mentality of like, come on, they can't get all of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you only get to bounce one yeah, legendary right. creature a turn, coward. Yeah. What are you going to yeah. bounce my Crack or my Brimaz, my Thalia, my other Thalia? You yeah. don't have enough. My, yeah. yeah, my whole deck <laughs> is Stone Rains for your Caracas. Yeah. That yeah. thing is always tapped. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Wheeler. Harbin, Vanguard Aviator, uh, white and a blue for a 3-2 legendary creature, a human soldier with flying. Whenever you attack with five or more soldiers, creatures you control get plus one, plus one and gain flying until end of turn. Uh, two mana, 3-2 flyer. Yeah, you read yeah. that right. Yeah, great. Uh, it's a human and a soldier. I'm gonna. We talked about humans a lot. I want to talk about soldier tribal real quick. We hyped it up in Dominaria United. We kind of hyped it up in the first set review as well. Um, I've done a little more digging and like filling out this deck. It's so more real than I ever thought. Oh, really? There are so many blue soldiers, mm. and the ones that, that exist are pretty reasonable. Mm. Like they're actually you're not cutting on quality. Not to mention. You get access to clones, phantasmal image, glass pool mimic, that sort of card. Um, so I think my comparison that I've been rocking is that I feel like blue white soldiers is going to play out more like merfolk in that it I mean both the color combination, you know, you're likely more like a, a 75 25 split between the sure. two colors and you're going to be more disruptive uh, or sorry, your disruption is going to be more targeted and top tier, but you're also just going to be like, here's a Lord. Here's a clone on my Lord. Here's another Lord. Sure. Uh, here's Rick Grimes from the walking dead or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's uh two mana three. Two. I would, yeah. I'd be hyped for this card at two mana three, one. I mean, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I have to give a shout out to a baby of mine. Blue white tempo. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, it's that deck typically wants to operate at flash speed, but give this a GTA and have counter backup, and the game is over very quickly. Yeah, geez, Louise. This also definitely shout out Flying Men's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, next up, Nelly. Legions to Ashes. One white black for a sorcery that says exile target non land permanent and opponent controls, and mm -hmm. all tokens that player controls with the same name as that permanent. Pretty cool. Like a fixed Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, the mana cost of Vindicate, does, it's a sorcery, but can't hit a land, but it can take out any one of your opponent's permanents, and if it, you need to take out all of their um, beast tokens or all of their spirit tokens, Maelstrom Pulse style, it also achieves that. Just looks like another another one of the long line of really clean black-white removal spells for, I guess it's mostly, mostly see them in like Aristocrats, Sandy B, Abzan decks. Orzhov, the, the Orzhov DNT, yeah. Mardu kill yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I don't know exactly where it fits on the on the Vindicate's scale, but I yeah, don't know. you have Vindicate, Anguish on Making, and then this. Maybe maybe, maybe you're cutting that four mana one for judgment. Uh, yeah. I I think I like this a bit more than I mean I like Vindicate the best. Yeah, Council Judgment's pretty good, but I I think this is better than. Um, Anguish, Anguish on making. Mm. Oh, really? And I really like the instant. I like that one of them is an instant. But yeah, are you, are you playing Utter End? Like is Utter End in there as well? That's the name of the one I was thinking of. Who am I, Jeremy White? <laughs> Four mana for an instant. 
Uh, Depends who you ask on the internet. You it might isn't be. Cryptic yeah. command. Right. Oh, I'm going to bite my tongue. Not going to be rude. Um, yeah. The, yeah. This this card has a home. Seems cool. solid. Yeah. All right. Next up, me. Mishra. Oh, my God. I'm getting, I'm getting all the meld cards. All right. Take a breath. Yeah. Buckle up. Yeah. I'm talking for 30 seconds straight again. Mishra, claimed by Gix, is a four mana three five legendary Phyrexian human artificer for two of black and red. Whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of attacking creatures. If Mishra claimed by Gix and a creature named Phyrexian Dragon Engine are attacking and you both own and control them, exile them and meld them into Mishra, lost to Phyrexia, it enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. So let's talk about the Phyrexian Dragon Engine. Phyrexian Dragon Engine is a 3-mana 2-2 two, two artifact creature Phyrexian Dragon. It has double strike. When it enters the battlefield from a graveyard, you may discard your hand. If you do, draw three cards, and you can unearth it for three red red, so five mana total. Finally, the meld card, Mishra, claimed by Gix. <sighs> Legendary artifact creature, Phyrexian Artificer. It's a 9-9. Nine, nine. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, choose three from the following. Target opponent discards two cards. Mishra deals three damage to any target. Destroy target artifact or planeswalker. Creatures you control gain menace and trample until end of turn. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Create two tapped power stone tokens. That's three. I'm short. I'm dizzy. I'm out of breath. Nelly, please start with the evaluation while I recover. Sorry, say something I, it's okay. I forgot. What? Can you read it again? <laughs> Thank you for that excellent diatribe. I think I did a good job. Yeah. You did yeah, fantastic. You did really well. Yeah, Wheeler just always wants to take you down a peg whenever he can. That's what? That's the dynamic. I apologize for Big Red. <laughs> as as the premier lands pilot I'll of the format. I'll stop being rude to right? Surge once he beats me in a match. <laughs> All right. Before Anyways, we forget what the card does. Incredible Titan here. Mishra, should we start from the the back or the front? We're, I'm looking at the Lost of Phyrexia meld pair. And while it's not as big as Titania, it does threaten <laughs> to win the game. <laughs> Just as cleanly, just as well. You can nug anything for three. You can bolt anything. You can mind route your opponent immediately, destroy their artifacts or planeswalkers. Um, give your own uh, Phyrexian artificer here menace so that it doesn't die in combat. Make some mana, maybe. I'm. You didn't have to give me this many options for me to be sold, Mishra. It's very hard to not win the game as yeah. when you're tapped and attacking with yes, this. Yes, totally. Absolutely agree. Um, now, the problem for this card lies in getting to this part. You've got a 4-mana 3-5 legendary creature. Those are fine stats, but it doesn't give you much except the chance to turn into Mishra Lost to Phyrexia. When is, this doesn't have haste or shroud or anything like that, um, and it doesn't have an ETB. It's just when you attack, you get to drain life your opponent a bit. So if you're in a deck that loves that effect, and this is like near the top of your curve, okay, maybe I'm sold on, on home for your deck, but... I'm not sure exactly where to put this card for for this reason, just because Mishra himself, this side of it, is so fragile. The Dragon Engine, pretty clean, right? Three mana, two, two, double strike, that's fine. We When we play double strike in Canadian Highlander, usually we're aiming for a two mana, one, one, or whatever the cheapest dry, double striker we can get so we can pump it. But the fact that it's colorless mana... I didn't do it together. You can cast oh. off Workshop. It's fine. <laughs> I'll call it out next it's time. Got workshop mana. It's yeah. got Workshop mana. There you go. For some reason, we just tap Workshop. We don't yeah, tap workshop. Ancient Tomb. Yeah. Every time you have an Ancient Tomb on the board, you always just kind of split it in yeah, half, you know, right? Yeah. You take the Tomb and you tear it in half. Yeah. Anyways, so this card, a little bit easier to defend. And with Unearth, it's like smooth that if this is the one they spent their removal spell on, you can still play Mishra for four and then play this for five. And I would it. play this by itself. Like, yeah, this card this. is good enough. Yeah. Uh, I would put this in Battle Bots. I would put sure. this in Workshop Weenie. Yeah. Uh, I think the fact that it casts off of Workshop, it has double strike. There are very few artifact creatures that have double strike. Hmm. Um, and the artifact decks, in particular Workshop Weenie, loves Umezawa's Jite. Right. And Jite and double strike are best friends. Like, I love this card. God, put a... um. Oh God, the bl the black equip that attacks for a bajillion, uh, and you can move it with black black cranial plating. cranial plating. Cran like, give this cranial plating. Yeah. Oh my God. Right. Like this is my favorite part of the whole meld thing. Yeah, I guess Workshop has never had a Mirren Crusader before, has it? Yeah. So that part's exciting. And then the question I have to ask myself now is if I'm in red black, 
And I'm because like my favorite workshop Weenie deck is um, is Grixis. If I'm in red black, do I splash Mishra for the chance to get the other side? And the answer on that case is probably no, because as you said, it doesn't do anything, right? Well, I I do want to defend Mishra because I actually think this is the best part of the of okay. the group. what? Well, I like the Dragon Engine for what it does. Okay, um, but I think. I don't know. I'm not as hyped as like making my cranial plating better, you know. <laughs> um, but but All Mishra. Right, so it's whenever you attack. Mishra doesn't have to be attacking. Yep. So oh, it does you're something right. That ability yeah, yeah. has haste. Yeah. Sorry, I did miss that. Okay, and thank you. Like if I, I think black red, we we talk about Rakdos aggro and like what Rakdos aggro looks like a, a lot over the years. And I think Rakdos like a more aggressive Rakdos mid range ish deck kind of akin to the one that you see occasionally in modern but also like pioneer and whatnot um can just curve out up the top like if your four drop slot is like hell rider hero of oxid ridge mishra and shieldred mm -hmm. that's terrifying right and then just a suite of creatures that chop away at their hp while you know keeping you slightly healthy like that's a deck that is just screaming for people to build it in Canlander. Has the tools, has the card quality, and this is a great addition yeah. for something like that. Red Black Aggro has always been very close for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Can we put the Dragon Engine in that deck too? See, that's the thing. <laughs> I don't want to, but right. I will. So we've got two. We've got two decks. Yeah. That so this is the the ultimate problem and why. It, all, both these other meld pairs are not as good as Titania because Titania is just like, do you have green man in your deck? Okay, cool. There you go. Have, both, um, yeah. have, have this bomb. Uh, but Mishra and the Dragon Engine have a harder time finding their way into the same deck. But mm -hmm. we're definitely going to try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, next up, Wheeler. Mishra, Tamer of Mok Fawa. Three black and a red for a 4-4 four, four legendary creature human artificer. Permanents you control have ward, sacrifice a permanent. Each artifact in your graveyard has unearth for one black and a red. Notably, artifact. Not artifact Not creature. Not artifact which creature. Is very, artifact. That's unusual because I don't think there's ever been unearth on a non-creature before, right? I don't think so. I don't want to waste time trying to remember what sure, that bad fair. Modern Horizons card is, but oh. I think it exists. Uh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, but, all right, it's unusual is what you're saying. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or maybe it's Streets of New Commander Commander. The point is, um, that's a really powerful ability. That's a really powerful ward. Also, nice Caracas idiot. But, <laughs> like... <sighs> It's also just a five mana four four. <laughs> it is a honk, yeah. Or it is a, it is a a Dirkwood board. So that <laughs> we don't love the stats, but both the abilities are really good. Yeah, and the man. I mean, the mana could be a little bit easier if we're playing like the red black like reanimator welder deck, where you'll play your mana vaults. You'll play, you know, uh, you're just fast mana to get out your to either cast your worm coil engine or to be able to loot your worm coil engine into the graveyard and then animate dead the worm coil or sundering titan or whatever is there some weird way to do broken stuff with kci in this i mean i said broken stuff in kci so probably but like right you sack an artifact you get a bunch of mana now everything comes back well the problem is that unearth just the replacement effect from unearth saying that if it, if it leaves the battlefield it's just exiled forever where typically kci decks don't run into the issue of oh no my egg is in the graveyard. Sure, of course. You're right. you're looking to do yeah. that yourself. Um, so I think you want to get chunky with this dude. Um, it's just whether or not that deck is already chunked out. You know, I could maybe also see trying it. I know this is an archetype I play, but it's an archetype I lose to plenty. Mm -hmm. Like just regular Grixis Reanimator. It's a five drop that's not part of your plan A, mm -hmm. but it's like. A very helpful thing for your plan B if you manage to keep stuff in your graveyard but then you don't have a reanimation spell this kind of fills the gap bring your Gris gristle brown back at least for one turn Ar artifact oh it's only artifact oh, cards. yeah okay my brain spun out into thinking yeah, it was artifact like, that's or unusual yeah, yeah all right yeah, okay, no. all right talk you want to talk artifacts the next card yeah is, let's is move on for okay that. nelly mishra eminent one it's 
two and a Grixis, so five mana total, two blue, black, red for a 5-4 legendary human artificer. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of target non-creature artifact you control, except its name is Mishra's Warform, and it's a 4-4 construct artifact creature in addition to its other types. It gains haste until the turn, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So now we're looking at, yeah. Well, real quick, this is oh, a yeah. commander card, so we need oh, to acknowledge thank you. that first. It's yeah. from the commander set. Yeah. It's not in the packs. And you can make trading post tokens and attack with them finally. And Staff of Nin tokens yeah. attack with Spider them finally. Spider-Vish saw tokens. Spider yeah. Fish saw tokens. Yeah. Worm coil engine tokens. Nope, that's a creature. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to read a card one of these days. Please don't roast me too hard. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fun things. You're, you're going to start attacking with your eggs? I'm just get start, in with your with your start chromatic starting with everything. I, I might yeah. I think this might be one of the most exciting cards for me mm. in the set. I'm going awesome. to absolutely immediately slam this into Grixis Welder. Yeah. Um yep. all that deck wants is more Karnstrucks or Tezzerits, Agent of Bolus. <laughs> sure. And this is basically a Tezzerit Agent of Bolus. Um make and it, it doesn't have to get fancy. Making a chromatic star or an Icker Wellspring still hits them for four, still draws me a card. I was thinking Icar Wellspring immediately with this one. Yeah, right? two cards off Icar yeah. Wellspring. This card's going to kill people dead. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Look at it all, it's beauty. Yeah. yeah. No, that card is um, kind of scary. Yeah. It's kind of beautiful too. It's very elegant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next up, Queen Kayla Bin Krug. This is a three mana, two, three legendary human noble for one of red and white. Four and tap. Discard all cards in your hand. Then draw that many cards. You may choose an artifact or creature with mana value one you discarded this way. Then do the same for artifact or creature with mana values two and three. Return those cards to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. So this does sort of a weird hand manipulation card draw sort of thing where you're like trying to keep very specific CMCs in your hand, discard them, giving your opponent information that's there, giving them a chance to interact with them in the graveyard, then returning them to your hand to bring them back. If you have some sort of way to synergize with um, permanents that care about cards entering or leaving your graveyard from weird zones or discarding cards, there's the potential for some upside. That being said, I have no idea what deck wants these effects yet. Also in red and white, it's kind of weird. It's neat. It's cool. It's expensive. It's obvious that they were like, the designers were worried about this breaking stuff. It's very expensive for four and tap. Um, but yeah, if you watching at home are just like, oh my God, this card is busted halfway and here's a bunch of lines you didn't think of, hit us up in the comments because I'm curious. Either of you have any idea how to evaluate this card? It's neat. I don't know, though. I, yeah, I'm on the same page, more or less. I just want to say that I think the upside with it is high enough that there might be a shell that it, it ends up in. Like, you don't have to work that hard to just have a one or a two or a three that you're getting in for four, and then you also get new cards that replace it. So if you're just, like, in a big mana value, like, if the pat four like tap... four mana tap, draw three cards every turn. Is and then you get a free blocker or whatever, right? It's sort of like a weird Planeswalker. Yeah, maybe. I kind of want... If, like, a... Uh... Hmm. Right? That, we want to have a home like, for you, can, Kayla. We can theory craft a bunch of stuff for this, but I don't actually know yet. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Four and tap. It's waiting to be broken. Yes. Only you can do that. <laughs> All right, next up, Wheeler. Sahili Filigree Master. Two blue and a red for a three loyalty planeswalker, Sahili. Uh, plus one, scry one. You may tap an untapped artifact you control if you do draw a card. Minus two, create two 1-1 one, one colorless thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. They gain haste until end of turn. Minus four, you get an emblem with artifact creatures you control, get plus one, plus one, and artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. I am so excited to play this card. We just talked about Tezzeret. This is, I've been comparing this to like a defensive version of Tezzeret. It still kills your, like making these two one, one thopters can just kill people as well. Like just a density of birds in the air. They, they that's great. The fact they have haste as well. Yeah. Oh, it, it's nice that this can actually check opposing planeswalkers. Like you could just play it, make these birds kill off the planeswalker. Then your opponent's in a spot where like they have to deal with these cheap flyers, which is pretty difficult to do. Um, 
And they also kind of want to deal with Sahili. And if they play to the board to deal with the Sahili, you just have two blockers. that, And then you get to start drawing more cards. Or you could play it, immediately tap your like Icker Wellspring, your Chromatic Star, your anything really, your clue tokens. Doesn't matter because it's uh, not non- non-token, which is nice to see. Or non-creature. Just any or artifact. It's just any artifact. Um, and then you threaten this alt. And this alt is really good (laughs) like it's one of those ones where you look at and you're like just plus one plus one just one less to cast that's huge cards have power and toughness and costs for a reason like that (laughs) that's how they're balanced it just leads to like the potential to loop in decks that aren't necessarily combo oriented it every like you play tons of token generators and then everything's just a two two by default this card is a slam dunk I'm so excited to play this. Yeah, I think yeah. Sahili Sublime Artificer, the three drop, is already like the most underrated planeswalker in all of Canlander. And this goes immediately into decks that look to similarly take advantage it's, of it. Sorry, Sublime Artificer, was that the first one, the, the Kaladesh one? No, or that's Sahili Rye. That's the yeah, the War of the Spark one. Is oh, the, yeah. The, the static ability yeah, every I time love you that cast. War of the yeah, Spark yeah, one. That's yeah. so good. But yeah, I just I really like that that you can slam this on three, plus one, draw a card. You have to have set up blocking for it or whatever, but it's only one turn. You can be chump blocking, and then wham, the turn mm-hmm. after you've played it, you get the emblem. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Next up, Nelly. Sky Fisher <laughs> Spider. Okay, it's two black green for a 3-3 three, three spider with reach. When Sky Fisher Spider enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. When Sky Fisher Spider dies, you may gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. If you do, exile Sky Fisher Spider from your graveyard. And I feel like Kathleen or maybe you, maybe a couple people were like, is this a reprint? If they just made a spider that feels like it does everything that spiders do. Yeah. Or everything that black... Uh, uncommons that cost two black and a green do. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of great stuff going on here. I don't know if it's going to make the cut into um, aristocrats. Maybe, right? They they like being able to deal with a big problem permanently on the other side of the board. Literally, when I played aristocrats a couple, uh, like a month ago or whatever, the number one thing after uh, winning that tournament was uh, I just wanted a ravenous chupacabra, but I didn't want to play ravenous chupacabra, sure. you know? And this is the perfect card. It's like, yep. what if you can kill that creature, but also, you know, anything? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Abzan recurring nightmare. Slam Hell dunk yeah. in any of those. Um, Allison probably slammed this in the rock. I could see this doing great in rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Sacrifice one of your walls or one of your random Garrick beasts. Grist token or whatever. Yeah. yeah but exactly. also anything that plays like cheap reanimation spells or mm-hmm. uses their graveyard. <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, me. The third path iconoclast is a two mana, two one human monk for a blue and a red. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, create a one one colorless soldier artifact creature token. <laughs> I mean, we have a oh we have a new god. best friend with our our good friend the oh my god of all the card names to forget young pyromancer. Thank God! Wow, that's <laughs> embarrassing. The young pyromancer. It has the same stat line. It also makes one ones. I mean, young PZ makes elemental tokens. I can remember that it makes elemental tokens, but not its name. Yeah, surge my brain. Nobody calls it young pyromancer. It's People true. play it and just go PZ PZ. Yeah, that's fair. Young P. I mean, I. I don't think there's a tremendous... I mean, okay, we already know this is good in blue-red spells. We know this is good in blue moon. Are the fact that this makes artifact creature tokens... Is that worth discussing? Yeah. Is that oh, open well, any other... I was going to try, yeah. oh, yeah. try this one out specifically in Academy. Perfect, perfect. Because I was like... I yeah, I'm forgot. slamming this in eggs, yeah. uh, yolks on the shag, Grixis welder. You just half welder. of those up, right? <laughs> I mean, but go. these are all decks that don't play Iron Pyromancer, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So Nelly. It does matter. And then also... In the decks that have Young Pyromancer, now you have two Young Pyromancers as well. It, it's worth noting that uh, casting off non-creature as opposed to just instant and sorcery is also just a, a massive oh, upgrade. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Mox and Bobbles, yep. Yep. Uh, Planeswalkers, that's a big <laughs> thing, especially as these decks get more progressive. Yeah. Stronger than Prowess, right? Yeah. This is yeah. It's hits so many things. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's probably going to happen some point soon. You might find yourself not sure what else to cut, and then you have to cut your Young Pyromancer. Oh, my God. Right? Yeah. Right? I don't know. The change in the guard is what we call that. You know, the uh, the young overtaking the old. Again, don't roast right. me. Wait, hold. Yeah. Love young pyromancer. Uh, next up, Wheeler. 
Finally, I'm free. Surge, take this one, bud. <laughs> no. All right, do it if you don't want to. Do you want to do it? Let me do the. Let me do the whole trilogy. All right. Okay. Welcome to our final meld card, Urza Lord Protector. This is a three mana two four legendary human artificer for one a white and a blue static ability artifacts instants and sorcery spells you cast cost one generic less to cast seven generic if you both own and control Urza and an artifact named the Might Stone and the Weak Stone exile them meld them into Urza Planeswalker activate only as a sorcery let's talk about the Might Stone and the Weak Stone five mana legendary artifact power stone when it enters the battlefield choose one. Draw two, or target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. You may also tap it to add two generic. This mana can't be cast, wait, this mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells, just like the Power Stones. And finally, the melded side is Urza, comma, Planeswalker. That's the name. Seven loyalty Planeswalker with a static ability. You may activate the loyal abilities of Urza, twice each turn rather than only once plus two ability artifacts instance and sorcery spells you cast this turn cost two generic less to cast gain two life plus one ability draw two then discard one zero ability create two one one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens minus three exile target non-land permanent and the ultimate minus 10 artifacts and planeswalkers you control gain indestructible until end of turn destroy all non-land permanents wheeler so i'm going to give this a shot in paradox academy uh i think bant is a color combination for paradox that is uh, maybe lesser known isn't the right word but you know people are still trickling in realizing that um, search for glory the like legendary tutor from Kaldheim just finds everything um i'm only i'm one of those people trickling in on that knowledge yeah yeah, yeah. um the base form of urza being a two four is kind of nice like that if my opponent is spending their turn caracasing my urza then hopefully they're not spending my turn collectoring my oof you know <laughs> so like i'm okay with that uh that's a paradox academy also just plays these are the card types that you kill your opponent with um and it blocks that's also just reasonable getting this out early in, a, in an aggressive deck sometimes that's all you need to do to survive the might stone and the weak stone kills collector oof that's a big one uh it kills collector oof no questions asked and then also just draws two cards on ETB, which is really great, especially if you um, sometimes Paradox Academy will use bounce spells to loop their own cards to redraw, like repealing your one thing, casting Paradoxical Outcome, that sort of thing. And then the flip side, it doesn't win you the game, but it wins you the game, you know? I mean, like getting this down and being like, all right, draw two, discard, draw two, discard is often just enough <laughs> to kill them. Um, just minus three current ways that... We'll usually put yeah, that usually the does it too. Yeah, um, hilarious turns where you plus two twice. Making four blockers is also just fine, or any combination of that. Um, so it's weird that like this is the second best combo, I think, out of all the melts. Titania is the best, then these two, and then. Mishra. So, when you say that? Are you evaluating all three cards in a package, or just the backside, or where it fits in the homes? Like, how do you? How, how are you saying when you say that my this evaluation is, is a combination of both the individual meld cards as well as the potential to play a deck that can meld Interesting. them together? I'm a little bit higher on the individual pieces from Mishra, but I think there's less of a home for the three of them together mm. versus. I think you're right as a package, this Urza package, the Urza package mm. is probably pretty good because you're right, each piece has a role in a greater strategy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I see where you're coming That's from. just the Phyrexian oil getting to your brain. <laughs> is it? Yeah, you just see a double striker off workshop and your eyes go blood red. And <laughs> you're not uh, wrong. I yeah. put a nettle cyst on it. Well, all right, Nelly, what about you? I think we've, we've said it already. I also look forward to trying this in, in Paradox Academy. I'm not sure... Where else? I mean, you could maybe try it in eggs or some other academy <laughs> decks. You can. There might be a deck that just wants to play Urza for the um, Goblin Electromancer. Like you're in blue white mm -hmm. and your spells. That might be. There might be a deck that wants to try that. But no, we we said it. I agree. This one's really strong. I also think the ranking of the meld pairs. I would put Urza second after Titania. 
I've been betrayed. <laughs> it's that oil, dude. <laughs> it's that oil. I believe that was our final card. I just want to check in really quick. No, there's there's oh, one more Urza. Young Urza, right? I believe we might have two more. Oh, two, two more. Urzas, right. I remembered right. Urza was the last card, but I forgot which mm, Urza. Right. Okay, all right. You're up. Yeah, Wheeler. Urza, Prince of Krug. Two white and a blue for a 2-3 legendary creature, human artificer. Artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two. <gasps> and then pay six generic, create a token that's a copy of target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 one, one soldier in addition to its other types. So this is tempered steel on an Urza. Yeah. Um, and that six man ability in the decks that typically want tempered steel, again, you got Mox, Man of Alts, Tolarian Academies, you'll probably get to six at some point. Uh, and you can just start making copies of... What if cranial plating was an equipment or a creature now? Um, that's pretty bad. Don't do that. But if you have to do that, great. I will say I'm actually not as high on this card as the next Urza. I think the next Urza will do a better job of killing people dead with your artifacts. Um, and it's mostly just because this dies to bolt. Like I'm just it dies to everything. It dies to everything. Yeah. I think your opponent might die before this dies. I mean, you could you could slam this and probably win, but like, yeah, that's the thing. Hovermere yeah. has never had a better friend. Oh, yeah. Like Hellrider dies to bolt, right? Yeah. So, but for a four mana, just like play this, hit you for more. Um, it the fact that it gets Caracas and Bolt is a little, eh, but. Overall, I, th I think this is just going to kill a lot of people in the right deck. I just want to say, coolest looking uh, plan to use your power stones that we've seen yet, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Make more land. Now my land my power stones are turning into land realms. Yep. Yeah, I love that. All right. And another Urza. Now Urza. Chief Artificer. Uh, three white, black, a blue, a six mana, four or five legendary human artificer with affinity for artifact creatures. What? We put one card with affinity in the side. Oh, sorry. In the commander this set. This is in the commander one, So there yeah. might be some more affinity cards in there. That's fine. Artifact creatures you control have menace. <laughs> and at the beginning of your end step, make a construct. What? So the fact that this one's like maybe cheaper than the <laughs> other one seems pretty messed up. It makes the creatures for free and it gives them menace. Um, Yeah, not a whole like... Not a lot to say. This is obviously really good. If you have artifact creatures and can cast this spell, probably play it. I think it's worth mentioning. I would play this card if it was just five mana. Like, I know it's a six sure. mana one. But if this was two and then the Esper colors, no affinity for artifacts, I would slam dunk this every time still. And I think that's that at least sets a reasonable expectation of, like, I have a single artifact creature in my deck that poops out artifact creature tokens and baleful strix. So like if you and, and even paying six mana for this just wins the game potentially on the spot or you know very quickly by pooping out these. So yeah, this is fine if it's three mana or six mana. All right. Any more Urzas? No. All right. That first one from Modern Horizons is really good though too if you haven't yeah. seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. What what does that one do? Hold on, yeah. <laughs> what? Only, Another good Urza? It also makes constructs, yeah. Whoa. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for part two of our set review. If there's any cards you think we missed or just want to tell us how cool we are and good we are at Magic, uh, let us know in the comments down below. A reminder that this podcast is brought to you by you, the support of the Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. I've been Serge, joined by Nelly. Silver bordered Planeswalker Urza, also pretty cool. And Wheeler. Blind Seer is playable too. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you at part three. Bye-bye.